We're very grateful to have our friend to share what he's learned after surviving an accident with electrical shock boundaries. Hi, this is Phil from EPSCO, and I'm here with Mark today. Mark was involved in an incident some time ago, and Mark was kind enough to spend some time with us today to talk about his situation and to share with us some of his pointers and some of the things he learned along the way. You're welcome, yeah. So how did you get into electrical? Electronics was, you know, in, in the mid-60s, electronics was the big new thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I went to uh, Brown Institute. Okay. I went through electronics first. Yep. And, and um, um, so they, they got a bunch of us coming through electronics school. Mm -hmm. they, and, 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 you know, and, and they, they, they offered us jobs to, to go into electricity. So right. then, then, they, then they sent us through an apprenticeship program. Okay. And, and we, were, we were hired to fix this automated equipment. Mm that, was okay. the so that, that was my start. So. Yeah. And that was in the 60s? That was in the, well, it was that late be, 60s, early well, 70s. Well, it would be um, the turn of the 70s. Right. Yeah, began, you know, late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. So back in so, those days when you were working in that environment, what would you think the safety culture was? You know, uh, safety was always talked about, and always, always preached. Um, you know, but the, but the actual practice kind of really fell back to the individual. Mm. Um, you know, it was um, all the safety was available to you know programs and information and was all available. But but it seems to me that um, that a, a lot of it fell onto the individual. Okay. Um, so if you look back at the, your situation, mm -hmm. the incident you were involved in, what, what was leading up to that? Can you walk us through kind of what was happening there, kind of leading up to how that incident occurred and what was kind of the physical, uh, well, what, what, kind of, what, was hap what happened there? What happened to you personally? What, uh, um, the, the background to it was we were, we were, P, we were, uh, we were, we were PMing um, uh, our, our, our uh, the input switches to the, the facility, the primary switch gear. And with that, we were, you know, it was a 13-8 system. And over time, insulators break down and uh, knife blade, knife, you know, the knife blade switches needed lubing and cleaning. And we were in the process of doing that. Um, and um, um, with that, uh, it was a, it was a, it was on a 4th of July weekend and um, uh, we could shut down the facility. So we were kind of under, we were kind of under the gun time, time uh, with a time frame. And um, uh, it, was a, it was a misty, it was a, it was a, night, it was a misty day. It was a, um, water in the air. And, and so, so we were, we were, with a time frame, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to decide, should we, shouldn't we, should we, shouldn't we? Mm -hmm. we you know, electricity and water don't mix. But, but we had a break and we thought we'd, we'd at least get one set done, one set of switches. So we, we, had, this, we, had, the, we had them all securely shut down, locked out, tag out, ground clusters. We had them very secure. And um, uh, I was inside doing one. And with, with the pressure, with the time frame, we were in a hurry. So I come out and, and the next switch was open. And, and obviously, I, I, you know, in my mind, I helped, I helped open them up, locked out, you know, put ground clusters on, locked them out. In my mind, it was safe. So I started heading into that. And what happened, another fellow came on the job site and opened a hot switch mm -hmm. we weren't prepared for. Um, and um, um, that's what happened to me. So yeah. I, <laughs> so that, that switch was energized that switch was opened energized. up yes. yes and you're a guy working in there with at 30 years experience yes or more 30 probably 30 yeah yep. yeah or more yeah, yeah 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 so you got 30 years of experience you're working on it and you get out of that one switch and you look over there and say this is ready to go i helped shut them down i right. help so i i you know in my mind i knew it was safe yep and and uh and yeah so then, what, what happened? You walked. You walked into it. Climbed into it. Uh, no, um, uh, these switches. Uh, it, it's they're 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 it's, it's a pretty good sized box. It's probably about six feet tall, you know, thirty inches wide, and and uh, about four feet deep. 
but in, and, and the, the back is a, is a great big bolted on cover. Mm -hmm. So to do that, you, you, take off, you, you take off this cover. And, and, and it's got then, so you, you really, you, you step over to get in. Okay. And I was in a process of going in. I had, you know, for, uh, you know, I had my hand on the, on the, on the, on the edge of the, on the edge of the switch. I was stepping over, stepping over this, this, this base plate and reach it, you know, so, you know, you're, you're heading in and, and, and it, it jumped. To you. It jumped to me. Yep. And I, you know, and, and I'm sure because of the humidity, uh -huh. And 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 the and the, uh, the and how close I was to the hole, right? Yeah. So you had one hand grounded, one other hand, hand grounded, going into it. One, yeah. You're kind of you know you're kind of stepping in, right? Your you're momentum. guiding. Yeah. You're, you're 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 balancing. You know. You're so so it jumped to my hand. Yeah. And it came out it came out to my my other hand. Right. Yeah. Then, yeah. then what do you remember? It. Do you remember doing that? Do you remember walking and stepping into it? I, I, I don't, uh, but I, I only know because, you know, how, how you do that, and, and, and I don't remember it jumping at me. Mm -hmm. I guess I remember, you know, entering, okay. but the next thing I know, I don't, I don't, um, they say there was a pretty loud explosion. <clears throat> I don't recall hearing that, but I remember, I remember looking, I was laying spread eagle out on, out on my back on the ground, so it, so, so it blew me out of the switch, but my heel caught the base plate and tip me over. Oh. <laughs> and so I, here I was spread eagle right. and you can't move. Now you're, you're, you're paralyzed. You can't move. And I was looking up at the sky and you know, I couldn't move and, and, and everything was kind of a greenish, greenish. There's no, I had no color, just pea green. And, and the first thing you, you, you don't move is the first thing you think about, well, I'm dead. I'll just wait till the lights go out. <laughs> right. And uh, honestly, I just I was laying there spread eagle well, I'm dead now. And then about 30 seconds later, I said, wow, I must be alive. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and, and then probably a minute or so later, it starts to hurt. Mm. <laughs> the, the pain comes. And it, it, comes, it comes at you pretty strong. Yeah. So, yeah. so were you on fire at this point? No, no. Um, um, actually, I had a, we didn't have electrical gloves. We had chemical, because we were, we had solvents. You were cleaning. We, we were cleaning, so we had a right. cleaning solvent or a solution. Right. Uh, I don't know if it was a solvent, but so we had we had latex gloves on. Right. Rather than electrical, you know, insulating gloves. Yep. And it it melted it melted the glove onto my hand. Oh my. And, and yeah, that's what. Um, so then yeah. the people that were in that area, how did they respond to it? What was the, do you have any, did, have they told, did they ever tell you what they did when you were? Uh, I don't recall <laughs> that. Um, I don't remember them getting there, but I remember they had me on a gurney and they're starting to cut my clothes off. Mm -hmm. they're, they're looking for exit wounds. Right. And I don't remember anything then until I got to the hospital. Right. Did you eventually, you found the exit wounds then? Uh, yeah, it was my hand. The yeah. hand that was a grounded, yeah, yeah. right? I, the rest of me, I, they never found. There's no, there was no other exit wounds. Just right. my hand. Wow. So just my hands were affected. Yeah. So, so from now, uh, what effect has that had? Just, uh, I mean, it's, granted, it's been almost ten years, probably or more, whatever it's been. Mm -hmm. What, what effect? What lasting effect do you have uh, from that injury? Um, I think just a limited. Uh, uh, I have muscle strength, you know, muscle loss, yep. uh, strength, and um, um, and uh, you know, I, you know, dexterity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I can't keyboard and those kinds of things. Oh. Um, 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 but, uh, and, but strength, I, I, I probably have half the strength I used to, okay. like a gripping strength. Yep. And, and, uh, um, but, but other than that, um, um, I kind of, you know, you just get, Normal you kind of get, you, you get, you, you get used to your limitations. Sure. Yep. Um, actually. I'll, I'll tell you, a screwdriver, you know, the exit wound, you know, if you're pushing on a screwdriver, yep. right in here, yep. that's, that's still painful. It's a still. scar tissue. Wow. Well, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, um, so. so when you kind of got through, uh, how long were you in the hospital? A month. A month. Yeah, yeah. So when you came out of that? I don't remember you... days, but it was, it, was, it was a month. Yeah. Um, um, so when you got home from the hospital, how long do you think it was? You went back to work, didn't you? I did, um, but I had probably, uh, you know, I don't know exactly, but I had probably, probably three, four months recovery time. Sure. 
because I, um, uh, um, they, they actually, they, you know, I, I, I kind of uh, was working on them to get discharged early, mm -hmm. and uh, um, they let me go, promising that I'd be back every day for dressing change. Oh, sure. So I had from to, the hospital. From, I had to go to, I, I had to go to the hospital every day for, um, for dressing change for probably two, three more weeks. Right. Um, oh. And then physical therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I had physical therapy for probably uh, at least a year mm -hmm. after that. Yeah. Um, trying to trying to gain strength and trying to um, those recondition yeah. recondition. So now uh, you kind of fast forward a bunch of years. All of us get more gray hair. Do we get smarter? Do we get wiser? <laughs> People look at yeah. now you're more aged than you were there. If you've had, you've had obviously a long time to reflect on that. Is there a message that you would say if you met a young person somewhere or somebody they had an opportunity to have a meaningful conversation with, what would that be? What's that look like? Well, I think, um, I think my message would be um, safety is in everybody's, you know, your, your own personal interest. Um, I think um, even, even victims are, have some a responsibility or some um, you know, in an accident. Mm -hmm. um, I'm searching for words, but 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 um, but safety. You have to you have to take ownership of safety as well. It, it's not somebody else just preaching safety at you. You need to live it. Mm -hmm. You need to work it. Yep. You need to be conscious of you. You want you know. Um, yeah. And and you do have to take ownership of. Mm -hmm. Of your own safety as well. Yeah. Um, you know, you can have all the safety programs you want, but you have to live it. Right. Um, if, even for me, um, if if I would have taken just ten seconds to look around and see that everything was in order, see if things are things are normal. And you know, if you're working a project, you know what should be normal and what isn't. And but you know, it it, it doesn't take but just a few seconds to look around and and reestablish that things are safe. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's in all our best interest. Right. Um, so we get pushed so, and pushed and pushed. Everybody wants it more faster. Uh, fa and yep. in some of those situations, we owe it to ourselves to take the time yeah, yeah. and just say, hey, let's just relax. It's not going to take that much longer. It's going to be and, OK. Let's and, make sure we got this nailed down. Yeah, and, and ten seconds isn't a very long time. No, not at all. Just to look around and 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 establish things are what they should be. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. And and for me, that's where I I should have had some ownership doing that. You right. Know? And and uh, and and it certainly could have been avoided. Yeah. Ten seconds. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. Or not even. Right. So and any project has 10 seconds worth of time. Yeah. Uh, With everything involved, I think there's always time for everything but an accident. Yeah. So, yeah. So you, you were asking me, you were asking me the, um, uh, uh, the ramifications of, of, of the future and, and, yeah. um, and, um, and, and, and actually you can kind of, you can kind of see how devastating it is. It's, it's skin graft, um, all the way up my wrist and, and, and um, you know, and, and the whole back of my hand, uh, across here, and, and down my fingers, and the wet, the you know where they when they when they do the skin grafting, they keep it together, put the skin over, and then they uh, they, they they cut it and staple it, um, and all those little dots they, they put it through a a tenderizer. Right. It, it's uh, uh, because when when you cut skin apart, you know it just shrinks up. So they put it through a, a, a it it it. it um, it, it creates, you know, puts all those holes so they can stretch it out. So it, they have to and, teach and then, the skin how to stretch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, um, so, yeah. yeah so, so uh, actually, um, little fingers always always take a beating. Oh, and I all asked right. my and and plastic surgeons do are, are responsible for burns now, and and I know my plastic surgeon personally, <laughs> and I run into him once in a while. And uh, so I asked him, well, you know, uh, you know, George, George is his name, his first name. He said, George, my little finger still doesn't work. And he just says, well, 
lots of little fingers don't work. <laughs> that was it. But but because he you know he he does burns he 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 was the head surgeon in the burn unit at HCMC uh, down in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And so I said, yeah, we have lots of lots of little fingers that don't work. Right. You can but, see but the still is that is that the webbing from where the the. No, that's where they perforate it. Oh, that's perfurated intentionally that way, just yeah, to give it, so they, to give so they, it some so flexibility. Can, yeah, yeah, and wow, you want to, that's here's, where, here's where they got the skin. <laughs> wow, right. So it it's wraps all the way around, all the way up to my hip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad you took the opportunity to just share such an amazing story with us. <laughs> but I tell you what, there's a message that you have that other people in the trade, I think, really are gonna gravitate toward, and I think you really should grasp a hold of just simply because that 15 seconds is all it takes. Yeah. And that message of just taking your time and just stopping. Let's think this through. Does everything look right? Right, it doesn't, it, it, you know, it, it doesn't um, impinge on the job at all. Right. Just a brief review before you go on. Just a, just a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's an awesome message, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Well, uh, Mark, I really wanna thank you for taking some time with us today. And I uh, really appreciate your message. And uh, hopefully we can share with as many people as we can. We're going to have an impact with it. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. EPSCO, electrical power and safety company. Safety. Diligence. Collaboration.